Hello everyone, it's good to come your way again. It's another edition of True Talk with Pastor C. Uh, and uh, we are still talking about relationship management part two. I want to say thank you to everyone who has subscribed to the YouTube channel. If you have not done so, please do subscribe to our channel, uh, share with your friends, and uh, send in your questions and um, your comments. Thank you for all the beautiful comments we've received on uh, Relationship Management Part 1. Um, we jumped into trying to tell us how to manage our relationship in Part 1, but there's something that God has laid in my heart um, to talk about. Before we talk about managing relationship, uh, and so, I want to ask a question like Jesus was asked in his days. Um, if you remember the story of the Good Samaritan in Luke chapter 10, Jesus was asked, who is my neighbor? My question this morning, the question we want to answer, I want to try by the grace of God. And like I said, you're welcome to send in your questions. You're welcome to send in your comments. Your observation is totally welcomed. Um, phone numbers and emails are at the end of this video. Please reach out to us uh, with your comments and your questions. And like I said earlier on, don't forget to subscribe. So the question we want to deal with this morning is, who is my relative? So we talk about managing relationship. We talk about having a good relationship with others. And uh, the question I want to ask, and the question that has been in my mind is, who is my relative? Who is your relative? Before you begin to talk about managing a relationship, before we begin to talk about, oh, okay, am I in a relationship? Are you in a relationship with me? Who is my relation? Who is my relationship? So I'm going to use relative and relation um, interchangeably. It's practically saying the same thing. All right, so the dictionary definition says that um, relatives are those who are connected by blood or by marriage. Well, there is a popular saying, if you do not know, uh, that <laughs> your, relation, your relatives are not those who are actually connected to you by blood only. I'll say that again. My relatives are not those who are connected to me by blood only. Sometimes, those who are connected to us by blood, who are related to us by the fact that they are our siblings, they are our husband, wife, partner, whatever, uh, adjective you want to use to qualify it don't really do what it means don't really play the role of relatives in answering the question in jesus's days he told us the story of the good samaritan and um i'll just give you an abridged version uh the man was traveling down the road uh he met with robbers who robbed him beat him up left him for dead and he was lying there half dead on the road a priest came and passed by you can say a priest you can say a levite uh you know the ones we talk about the titles the prophets the ones who have the very very big titles today passed by you know and just walked past this man um another, another noble man came passed by and just walked past this man even if jesus counted two people i'm very sure many more may have walked by uh, and passed by this man without helping him but a samaritan and i'll tell you why it was very very significant because the jews and the samaritans at this time were not friends <laughs> they were not even friends they they, 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 did, they did have things in common they didn't do things in common so it was quite significant in the parable of jesus that a samaritan was the one who came to the rescue of this man. He was a Samaritan who took him up, 
cleaned his wound, took him to, you know, what you will call a present day hospital, paid the hospital bill and said, look, if there's more bills to be paid, I'll come back and I'll take care of it. So I dare say in answering the question, who is my relative? Your relative is that person who is willing to be there for you. Family is not those who are connected by blood. It is those who want you in their lives and those who you want in your life. I have come to discover uh, in my small work, <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, in my small work in life, that um, strangers sometimes are there for you much more than those you consider friends, much more than those you might consider relative. So, why this talk? I just want to encourage you to be on the lookout so you don't get your heart broken. Someone said to me, uh, in uh, talking about the relationship management, so said to me, but, you, you know, I said in that video um, that our, 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 our relationships will either make us or build us or mar us, which is the truth. And this person said to me, I've only had relationships that I have had to build. It looks like no one is building me. I am, I am now totally drained. I feel like I'm pouring from an empty cup. And I said to the person, maybe you're not choosing your relations rightly. Maybe you're not choosing your relatives rightly. You're not choosing those who should be in your life rightly. The hands are two. And when they wash each other, they are clean. When you wash with one hand, it's an African proverb. You wash with one hand, the hand is not clean. I know that now is the season of hand washing with the COVID and all that, so you can understand what I'm saying. You need to wash both hands, both hands, scrubbing and rubbing together for the hands to be clean. It's the same thing in a relationship. If you are the one who is calling the person, the person is not calling you, I dare say you are in a relationship alone. If you are the one texting the person, the person never texts you back, I dare say you are in a relationship alone. If you are the one who will jump through hoops? You can do anything for this person. But when it is time to show up for you, they are not there. You are in a relationship alone. It doesn't matter what the title of the person is to you. Cousin, auntie, father, mother, brother. A relationship should always be two ways. The people who love you might not love you back. Hello, people. Normal with life. So I'm not saying that you should expect those you love to love you back. But I'm saying those that you are in a relationship with. So we have been called to love everyone. And we must make a distinction, uh, you know, from what, what it means to love everyone and to be in a relationship with someone. To be in a relationship with someone means that I and you have an, an understanding that you are my friend and I'm your friend. You are my sister, I'm your sister. You are my brother, I'm your brother. You are my husband, I'm your wife. You are my boyfriend, I'm your girlfriend. You are my fiance, I'm your fiance. These are relationships. And so, yes, we can love everyone. And love from afar, love from, you know, a, a close pre proximity, yes, but... When we say we are in a relationship, it doesn't have to be one way. It cannot be one way. It cannot be one way love. It cannot be one way, one way street. No, it's a two way street. A relationship. Yes, it's a two way street. It takes two to tango. Another African proverb says that when two dogs are playing, you know, both have to fall for each other at certain points. In the play. It doesn't have to always be one dog always falling. The play is not going to be sweet. I don't know how else to express. It's actually said in, a, in pidgin English. <laughs> in pidgin English. Eh? So when, when you have someone who claims they are in a relationship with you. But you are the only one making the effort to reach out to them. 
You are the only one making the effort to send messages. You are the only one making the effort to buy gifts or give them money or whatever. You are the only one making the effort to be there for them when they need emotional support, when they need a shoulder to cry on, but they are never there for you. They are never they, they never have your time. They never call you up. They never look for you. They, they, they never look for anything that concerns you. They are not building you. You keep pouring out. You keep giving out. You're going to get burnt very soon. You get burnt out and you not have anything to give anymore. So before we continue talking about relationship management, and yes, there's a part three coming up. Before we continue to talk about relationship management, I want you to first define your relations. Define your relatives. Look at your cycle. Yes, look at your cycle. Begin to think of the numbers you need to delete. <laughs> yes, this is true talk. And I'm not going to paint it. And some people will not like this, but let's tell ourselves the truth. You begin to think of some numbers you need to delete, some addresses you need to forget. So that your heart can be whole. Your soul can be well. You need to be healed. You need, you, you, you need to be you need to be 100% okay to be able to give in a relationship. Oh, you are a sister. That guy has not asked you out. He just keeps coming around you. You know, he keeps coming around you. He's always visiting you. You're always cooking for him. You go to his house. You might even start doing wifely duties, but he's not asked you out. I dare say, sis, you're setting up your heart for a serious heartbreak because very soon he's going to deny the fact that, oh, well, we're just friends. I've seen that happen a lot. And a lot of sisters, oh, they end up crying. Oh, he broke my heart. No, you, 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 you broke your heart. You smashed your heart because you were in a relationship with yourself. The relationship needs to be defined. There has to be an agreement. Oh, yes, we are in a relationship. If he has not asked you out, if he has not married you, why are you performing wifely duties in the hopes that he will? The same thing with a brother. You are there. You know that you don't like this person or you're okay. You don't have a future with this person. You don't propose or plan a future with this person. But you always go ahead to be there, to be around them, blocking others from coming to them because, you know, this person, they are thinking, well, he, he's in a relationship with her. But you're not going anywhere. You're in a relationship with yourself. Tomorrow she marries someone else. Oh, that sister I spent so much on her. I took care of her. Hello, you never made your intentions known. This is what we're saying. For all of your relationships, Define where you stand with people. And hello, they might not say it to you verbally, they might show it by action. You are in a relationship with a guy. Okay, yes, he has asked you out. But you are in this relationship for four years. You are in this relationship for three years. You are in this, in fact, I dare say two years is too long. If a guy wants to marry you, he would know in six months that you are meant for him. And that's why some people end up in a relationship with a guy for five years and then the guy breaks up with them but marries someone he just met within five months. Define your relationship. It's a season to be married. So Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. Um... 2020, everyone says, has been a, <laughs> a crazy year. But for me, it, is, it has been a testimony of God's mercy. And I dare say, even from the story of Jesus, and from the story of his birth, that the person who provided an inn a manger for Jesus to be born was a relative of Mary and Joseph at that time. 
So in this season, be that relative that is there for your relations. Be that relative that is there for your family. Be the father that is there for your family. Be the mother that is there for your family. Be the brother that is there for your sister. Be the sister that is there for your brothers. Stop making it a one-way street. Make it a two-way street. Be there for them as they are there for you. Relationship is not a one-way street. It's a two-way street. Define your cycle. As you go into 2021, uproot and replant. Reconnect with those who will build you the network that God has built. And I, 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 I say it again. They might even be strangers. They don't have to be related to you by blood or whatever. They might be strangers. People God will bring your way who will build you up, who will be there for you. All you need to do is to be conscious and identify them and stop pouring into those who will never, never be there for you. Stop pouring into those who will go behind your back to break you. Those who will try to destroy you. Identify them on time. I've already given you the signs. If you are the one who always have to go to them, they don't come to you. You are the one who always have to visit. They don't have the time to visit you. You are the one who always have to give. They never have to give you. Then you need to redefine your relationship. Merry Christmas, everyone. I uh, will try as much as possible to bring our series to you uh, fortnightly. Henceforth, please remember to subscribe. Invite your friends. Share this video as much as is possible. You may be helping someone in need. Main Fences um, is the producer of this True Talk with Pastor C. Uh, and Main Fences is in Nigeria. Main Fences is in South Africa. Main Fences is also in the UK right now. There are phone numbers to reach us in all of these three countries. If you wish to do so, you want to leave a comment, you have a question, you want to just say anything. You want to sponsor our videos please get in touch with us once again have a very very merry christmas with your relations god bless you